Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and today we're going to talk about how you can wipe your database between your JUnit 5 tests. So usually if you run your tests against a database, what you want to do is isolate them as much as possible. So if you write data to the database, you want to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the other tests, right? So what you could do is use an in-memory database such as H2 and then throw it away essentially. Um, but there are times when you really want to test against the real database. So that could be a Postgres database or similar. And in that scenario, you also want to make sure that you clean up the database after every test. So in this tutorial, I keep it short and sweet and I will show you how you can use a JUnit 5 extension to actually clean the database. And with that said, let's code. All right, so in the IDE as usual, Let's start with the build file. So you can see I'm using Spring Boot 253. And the important dependencies for this tutorial are Postgres because that's the database that I'm using. And I'm using the Spring Boot Strata Data JDBC. Um, I don't need JPA for this. I, I just want to keep it as simple as possible and that's why I use JDBC directly. So I also prepared a little database. Let's take a look. Uh, it's called Heroes. Um, and as you will see, uh, it maintains, well, heroes. So um, this will use their name uh, as they are known in the in the hero universe, as well as the first name and the last name of, of the real uh, egos. So um, this is how we are gonna start. So let's take a quick look at the database. So I'm jumping to the query console uh, using the default one, uh, go away. Um, and there's really just one table which is called heroes. So I'm um, selecting all the heroes out there and I can see there are none at this point. And this is actually the state that I wanna maintain during the tests. So we're gonna populate that database and afterwards make sure uh, that we clean it up because we don't wanna expose all those heroes, right? So let's close this and go directly into the test because we're just testing all the way. All right, in the test, uh, that's the usual Spring Boot test um, that's being generated as part of the Spring Initializer. We can keep this for now. And what we're gonna do is rewrite our first test. And let's call this somewhat different. Um, get me some heroes. So this is where we're gonna create the heroes. So since I'm using JDBC, I will of course need a data source. And I can ask Spring to um, inject that directly. Uh, it's called data source. Um, there will not be the data source yet because it did not configure it in the application properties, right? So let's add the URL first. So that's JDBC um, and then it's uh, Postgres. Now it's without the slashes. It's PostgreSQL and then it's colon slash slash. It's localhost 5432 and the database base is called heroes. So now we have the spring data source oh is it data source um username so that's just my name and let me just copy that and there is no password so it's that so that should configure the data source that i have just injected so let's go back to the test that should inject the data source correctly and now given the data source let's actually add some heroes okay so we use the connection uh, call use and get the connection. And what I'm gonna do is, let me create a little helper for the heroes. So let's create a data class for a hero. And the hero has a name, it has first name, and it has the last name. So that's our hero. And what we're gonna do is uh, use the connection and then create a list of heroes that we will work with. So it's list of hero. Um, so there's the first one and we call that one Hulk, right? And that's Bruce Banner. Um, next up is uh, this one missing. So let's go with um, Spider-Man. Uh, that's Peter Parker. And finally, oh, let's have a third one that's Iron Man. And that's, of course, Tony Stark. So that's a good mixture, I guess. 
I'm a little bit biased apparently, so we don't need this because it's clear that this is a hero. So now we're using all of these heroes and just add them to the database. So I can go with heroes for each um, hero and then use connection prepare statement and the statement is insert. It's it's really low level stuff here, right? So I could use a repository easily, but I just wanted to go with a simple JPA, uh, simple JDBC, sorry. Uh, insert into heroes um, name, first name, last name, values, and then just using the placeholders. So that's, um, hero name and then it's hero first name and finally there's um, hero last name hero last name so this will add all the heroes uh, one by one um, and we could actually yeah let's run this so this is a test already so let's just see that everything works so I'm gonna run the test here run get me some heroes so and the test has finished successfully because there wasn't really something to to test let's just um quickly check um the database so select from our heroes let me close this and uh, let's run this so um here what we can see is uh that the database is still empty and i even know why because i forget one of the um essential method calls, which is not just to prepare a statement, but really to execute it. So let me run this test again. Um, so that was work. Let's go back to, yeah, let's jump to the query console again. And uh, let's run this again. Okay. And this time we said it has worked, right? So we can see uh, the database has assigned the ID to each of the heroes. And we have Hulk, Spider-Man, and Iron Man, and they are all in there, which is nice. But what we really wanted is to just write them in there during the test and afterwards delete them. So what we're going to do next is write the code to um, delete all the records from the database. All right, so back in our test. Um, and this, this is really, if you're used to JDBC, this, nothing, nothing here really should surprise you. Um, I'm just writing this here um, from call it cleanup and that's our function to clean things up. All we will do is we use the connection and then just issue um, connection prepare statement and then do delete from our heroes and don't forget to execute that. So how can I actually run this? Uh, I can use the annotations that have been around for some time which is after each. So after each test this function is invoked and it will just clean up the database. So let's try this out. So I'm gonna run this test again, which now should leave us with six records, right? Because um, they are written again as part of that test, they will be saved. So, but the result should be nevertheless, that if I now go back to the query console, and if I'm now refreshing, it's empty. And this is actually just what I want. And this is, this is really not too complicated, right? But um, how can you actually use now the same code um, across multiple tests? Because right now, as you have seen, um, this code, and that's the wrong one, let's go back to the test. Um, that callback actually is now executed as part of that test. So I could now extract that into a common superclass, but I'm not a big fan of just inheriting the implementation. So what we can do instead is use a JUnit5 extension. And so here's what that looks like. Um, I just leave that here for now and create the extension. So let's call that database cleaner extension. And that will implement a callback and it's called after each callback. So that's a programmatic like uh, way of, of doing what we've done up until now uh, and I have to just implement one function which is called after each so that's it's getting a little bit tricky because let me just copy over the code from here so I want to clean the database so I can just paste this here but now I'm of course missing the reference um, to the data source 
so how do I get this? Because this is not a not a bean managed by Spring, right? Um, and I will not make it a component or anything like that because the way that's going to be used is by just using extend with and then specifying database cleaner extension class. So this is how you register the extension. And this way, JUnit will load it and execute it accordingly. So let me just delete that already. So the question now is, how do we get access to the data source? And this, this is actually the interesting piece of that tutorial. Um, what we're gonna do is we use the context that's provided. Uh, let me do this. And use the Spring extension. And now we can get an application context based of that extension context. So I can pass in the extension context and then get myself the bean, which is the data source class Java. Um, so this way I will just get the data source, right? Um, now I have it and now I can execute the same statement as before. So um, I've used, oh, I'm, I'm using the same test. I have deleted the, the previous um, after each function that we had here. So let me just quickly run this and see if that works. So test has executed. Let's go back to the um, query console. And if I just refresh, I can see it's still empty. So everything got deleted. And this is how you can use that and use it in a way that makes it easy to reuse it across different tests without using a common superclass or anything like that. So. Um, and as you might have seen briefly in a code completion, after each is just one of the callbacks, right? I could also use um, before each callback, there, may, uh, there are more callbacks available that, could, that I could implement and then register them with the extent with annotation over here on the class that has to use them. Um, and that's it for this tutorial. I hope that was useful. Uh, if you got any questions, just let me know. I link to the code on GitHub in the description below and I'll see you in the next video.